Ciao a tutti, benvenuti a questo nuovo talk per la Spring User Group Italia. Il talk sarà in inglese perché oggi abbiamo un ospite internazionale. So, welcome to this presentation. This is a really hot topic because today we are talking about Spring Native. A special thanks also to VMware that, that uh, helped us to organize this meetup and also the others. Thanks, because uh, this uh, community is uh, amazing. Today, we have uh, an international speaker. He is uh, a Spring contributor, a great developer. So welcome, Sebastian. Hey. Hi, how is it going? Fine, fine. Uh, we have just released Spring Native.11, so that's good timing to do this, uh, this talk. And in French, I think uh, is uh, comment ça va? Exactement. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm living in Lyon, uh, so not very far from Italy. Okay. So, uh, please, uh, tell, me, tell us a little bit about uh, this topic and uh, introduce uh, a little bit uh, yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I'm Sébastien Deleuze. Uh, I work as a Spring Framework contributor for, um, I think, seven years now. And I have been working on... Uh, in improving the Jackson support. I have introduced the Kotlin support in Spring Framework. Uh, and uh, lately, I have been working on this native effort to, to be able to compile Spring Boot application to native executables using GraalVM. And uh, yeah, now that's my most of my focus. Uh, and that's what I am going to present today. OK, thanks for the presentation of yourself, of course. And I remember that at the end of the talk, we will uh, read uh, all your questions and we try to answer at all, of course. And what can I say? The stage is yours and enjoy. Okay, thanks. So, um, so yeah, today we are going to talk about uh, a Spring Native. A quick disclaimer, because what I'm going to present is likely to change. And uh, I would like to start by a flashback. Um, in March, uh, a few months ago, the Spring team announced something pretty special. So by Spring team, I mean myself, uh, Andy Clement, who is the director and the, uh, is working also on Aspect J, Brian Clozel from Spring Boot, Jens uh, from Spring Data, Ria from Spring Security, uh, Dave uh, Sayer from Spring Boot and Spring Clouds. So you see there is the whole team uh, who is involved. Uh, and we have announced in March uh, Spring Native Beta. So um, it was a way for us to announce that yeah, Spring Native is now more ready for wider conception. We are not yet GA, but um, yeah, it, it was a significant signal and the community feedback was huge. Uh, a lot of retweets, a lot of views on the video. And um, yeah, very recently, I have announced our new release, uh, Spring Native.11, and that's uh, what I'm going to present mostly today. But first, before, before going to the what's new and what are the new exciting features of Spring Native.11, uh, just a quick recap on what Spring Native is. So uh, Spring Native uh, provides beta support for compiling Spring Boot applications to native executable with GraalVM, so instead of uh, deploying your executable jars and requiring a GVM to run it. Uh, it provides a new way to deploy your Spring Boot application. You just uh, need to deploy a native executable, typically in a container, that then run uh, extremely efficiently. I'm not here to say that native is magic and cover all the use cases. It really depends about your needs. Um, not everybody is running a business like Twitter and need huge uh, um, throughput. Uh, maybe you, you are developing some back offices or maybe some functions. So it, it really depends about your use case. So the GVM is really good in terms of build time. Java compiled pretty fast. It's super mature. Uh, the GVM uh, is great for performance, so great latency throughput. But uh, native is much better in terms of startup time. So Java is, um, people usually complain about Java's slow startup time and um, native allowed to have almost instant startup. Uh, in terms of memory footprint, native also um, allowed to consume much less memory uh, typically. 
but it's uh, it requires longer build time. So it, it really depends about your use case. And typical use cases are sustainability. So typically you want to run your workload, your Spring Boot application on a smaller and cheaper instances. So less money to spend, better for the planet. Uh, I think that's one of the first use cases. Um, the fact that uh, it allows to deploy a native executable with everything in it, uh, the subset of the JVM that you are using, your application, the libraries that you want to use, uh, and require no, no JVM. So it's, it's pretty simple to deploy. I think that's a good fit with containers and Kubernetes in general. Uh, it allows to have lighter ports. Um, fast startup uh, means better scalability. It's also a good fit with Knative which is a way to um, to basically a platform to start container as soon as you receive a request. For serverless, that's also an obvious use case because in some startup, obviously. And microservices, I think that's another one because when you, are, you have your big system and you split it into multiple microservices, you pay basically a tax in terms of memory uh, and resources that you require for each uh, microservices because each minimal GVM has a cost. And here with native, I think the cost of splitting your system into multiple microservices is, is less an issue. So our goal is to allow developers to compile their Spring Boot applications to native executable with as few changes as possible. I don't claim that zero modification needs to be made, but basically uh, as we mature, the goal is really to mainly require modification on your build, not that much on your application. So there are multiple challenges uh, on GraalVM side. So GraalVM is, is a project that allows to compile to native via what we call native image uh, compiler, but there is a wide range of other capabilities that we are not going to mention today. So if we focus on native, some GVM features are not supported, uh, not that much. But for example, you can't generate bytecode at runtime because native is much more, uh, it's, it's less dynamic, basically. Uh, uh, a lot of things need to be fixed at, um, at build time. There is no class lazy loading. So on the GVM, your class is loaded when it is concretely used. Uh, at, na at native level, that uh, the code removal happen uh, uh, happen ahead of time, but that means that when you start your application, everything that you ship in the native executable is loaded in memory. So that's just a different behavior. Configuration is required for reflection proxies and resources, but you will see that Spring Native is going to generate that configuration for you, most of it at least. Uh, GVM libraries are mostly untested on native, so that's that's an issue that uh, we have planned to help uh, to solve. Compatibility versus footprint. Uh, sometimes you want to optimize the footprint, but you, it's impacting the compatibility. So that's that's a challenge for us. And long build times, uh, I think that's a challenge for everybody. It takes time to compile native. So you have the time to drink one or two coffee. And yeah, that, that can impact your, your productivity. On spring side, um, runtime reflection uh, used with the annotation-based programming model is a challenge because it requires explicit um, configuration on GraphVM side, and also uh, it, 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 it's impacting the memory footprint. The API backward compatibility is a strong concern, as you may know, of Spring. And we had to do this work on Spring Native without breaking the compatibility and without doing major arch arch architectural changes on Spring Boot 2.x and Spring Framework 5.x. So that, that was a kind of challenge to do that without changing the, the core. But concretely, how, how does that work? So if you want to compile your Spring Boot application or create a new one uh, to native, I think the easiest path to start is to go to start.spring.io. You will see that we now propose a Spring Native dependency. So just type native, for example, in the in the dependency box and select it. And that will automatically configure your project for native. It's also obviously available in IDEs like NetBeans, uh, IDE, or Eclipse. And the build configuration for native will be done automatically for both Maven and Gradle. So choose choose your flavor. Um, we also generate a file of documentation that explains basically the first steps. 
um, because the build commands are different compared to uh, the GVM. We provide an extensive reference documentation. So you, you have the link if you go to the Spring Native website, we share the URL later, you, you will find this documentation. And we provide two, two ways of building your native executable with Spring Native. So the first one is based on build packs. Uh, build packs, you may know build packs because it's already used to provide container support in Spring Boot. Um, so basically, there is a build pack integration in Spring Boot that is by default using containers uh, with uh, OpenGDK running your, uh, your, uh, your Java application. And what we did with Spring Native is that we have added uh, native support for that. So instead of uh, having an uh, a GV, um, instead of having OpenGDK in your container that will start your uh, your application uh, deployed as a, for example a, an executable jar, it will just run the native executable that is created by Spring Boot and Spring Native. It requires Docker but not GraalVM native image because the native image compiler uh, is present inside the container. So basically. The compilation of the native image happen in a container and we generate a Linux container. Uh, x86 is supported. ARM support is work in progress. You can follow this, uh, this issue for updates. So this one is really to, I think, to deploy, um, to deploy that, uh, to package that in your CI CD platform to a container without uh, having to plug everything manually, but you can directly build a native executable on your platform. So if you are on Linux, you can create a Linux executable, same for Mac OS, same for Windows. And for that, you will use uh, Maven and Gradle plugins part of the native build tools. Native build tools started as a collaboration between Spring and GraalVM teams, and recently the Micronaut team has joined. And uh, it's available on GitHub, feel free to have a look. Um, we continue to update it with uh, with the GraalVM and Micronaut teams. Uh, application, it provides application compilation and testing support. And we have Spring team has contributed the testing support. We we really believe that's really important to be able to validate your GUnit test. So it supports GUnit 5 and also GUnit 4 via the Vintage in engine. It requires a GraalVM native image compiler installed locally. Uh, so just follow the Spring Native doc to, to know where to download it. And it produced, like I said, uh, a native executable. There is no co cross compilation support. So uh, to compile, you can use build packs or native build tools. So for native build tools, I will use Gradle native build and for Gradle, uh, for build packs, Gradle uh, boot build image. And you will see that both will uh, start basically the regular compilation of your application, and then uh, they will run the native image compiler that will translate your Java bytecode into a native executable. So at the right, it happens directly on your machine to create an executable um, that you are going to see in the build, um, in the build directory. So you see, this is a regular executable, and at the left, it's creating uh, a container image that you can then run with, with Docker if you want. So that's really the native image compiler integrated into uh, Spring Boot and uh, native build tools plugins. If we do a deep dive in the container uh, image that has been generated by the, um, the build pack variant, you will find basically um, a container image with uh, various layers. The first one, uh, which is here, uh, 17 megabytes, is uh, the OS, but a very, very minimal OS like GDPC, OpenSSL libraries, and a few other ones. So very teeny. After that, you will find the native executable that basically contain your application, the part of the, the GDK that you are using, the part of your, your dependencies that you are using. And you see that here, so here that's a compressed executable that contains everything and it's only um, uh, yeah, 15 megabytes, so pretty, pretty optimized. And uh, while the compilation takes some time, the startup is almost instant, so just a few milliseconds, even for big, uh, big applications, so that's, 
I think that's that's nice to be able to start spring applications um, basically instantly. There is also native testing support. So here the goal is to compile your GUnit tests uh, to a native executable, uh, run the native uh, test executable, and generate regular GUnit reports. Uh, so both units and integration tests are supported. Be aware that a native Mokito is not supported yet, so you can't use Mokito for now, but there is some ongoing work to make it work. Uh, just not yet yet. So yeah, a single test executable is created, so take some time and then yeah, execution, you get a report and you can just process it with your regular, regular CI CD platform, whatever. We support two languages, Java, of course, and also Kotlin. Uh, Groovy is not a good fit with native, so it's not, not supported. But we, we really provide first class support for these two ones. And uh, the current scope of the initial support that we provide is that one. I don't claim that every use case is supported. But basically, we are testing um, those starters uh, with our samples. We monitor them. Uh, as soon as we do some changes, we rebuild our samples to make sure that that works. So yeah, you, you get an idea about the scope and the scope of the support will obviously increase. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's for now what we what we support. Um, just a quick overview of how concretely GraalVM native configuration can be specified without Spring Native. So. Uh, you will find some files in meta inf slash native image, and you will find JSON, fi JSON files like reflect-config.json, like that one. And that's how we specify that, for example, reflection should be provided for fields, constructors, methods, or uh, nested classes for those uh, the specific classes. And that's basically what Spring Native is going to generate to make your application working on, on native. And uh, in order to make it easier for you to write this kind of configuration, with Spring Native, you will typ typically not write uh, JSON files manually. You will use uh, native ints. So via native ints, you can specify native image uh, options that could be specified and passed to the native image compiler. You can specify reflection with type ints. You can specify resources because resources need to be configured explicitly with, with native. By default, we are adding everything that is in SRC main resources or SRC test resources, but you may use some, um, some, some modules, some dependencies that provide their resources as well. You can configure GDK dynamic proxies, but also just plain uh, uh, class proxies with another annotation. Serialization and finally initialization. Um, that could be uh, set to build time if, if needed. So it's just another way um, to specify native ints. And that will basically generate that kind of file that could be understood by the native image compiler. Now, uh, let's have a look uh, about what we have in that, that 11. So uh, we have been working five months on dot 11. So that's a pretty big release, despite um, the version name, the version used. Um, the big feature is the new ahead of time engine that I'm going to describe today. Um, we are using GraalVM 21.3 baseline. Uh, we are supporting a new compiler, uh, which is Liberica Native Image Kit, which is basically a distribution of GraalVM Community Edition uh, on top of Liberica GDK provided by Bellsoft. Improved testing supports, Java 11 and 17 supports, Spring Boot 2.6 baseline, and UPX compression for container images. Uh, quick focus on UPX, so UPX is basically a tool that allows to compress very efficiently native executables. That's not specific to Java or GraalVM. And it's now integrated at build pack level and that allows uh, four times size reduction. So that allows smaller container images. But interestingly, the startup is usually faster because uh, what we lose in terms of 
CPU time to decompress the native executable, you will gain it uh, uh, at I/O level. So it's it's interesting to see that the compressed version is faster than the uncompressed one. But let's talk about the big big feature, which is the ahead of time transformations. So um, Spring AOT, so AOT means ahead of time. Uh, that means basically build time. Spring AOT Maven and Gradle plugins perform powerful build time transformation on Spring Boot application to improve the efficiency on native and potentially on the GVM too. The goal here is not just to provide the native configuration to make Spring Boot application running on, uh, on native. The goal is to transform your application during the build in order to provide to native image compiler something that basically run uh, faster, is more compatible with native, uh, and, and that allow Spring to provide a better efficiency on native, basically. So how, how that works? So you, you are still writing your regular Spring Boot application sources. When you want to run it, you will compile it via your IDE or via plugins. That will generate application bytecodes. And until uh, that point, nothing changed. But when the application bytecode is created, uh, then Spring IoT plugins are involved, so Maven or Gradle plugins. And based on your application bytecode and a few other inputs, it will generate IoT sources. So that's basically Java sources that are generated at build time. Uh, we are compiling that with Java C. That's, that's very fast, and that generate bytecodes. We use this opportunity to generate the native configuration, like the JSON files I, show, I showed previously. And then the native image compiler is fed with those inputs and will create an optimized native executable. If we go a little bit deeper, um, you will see that the Spring IoT plugins take as input the application bytecode, the class pass, so your dependencies. Spring Factories, which is basically the plugin mechanism behind Spring Boot, or your application properties to evaluate some condition. And the, the IoT process is going basically to create, at build time, an application context. It's not going to start it, so you it will not try to connect to the database or thing like that. It will just create it without running it. It will perform condition evaluation at build time, most of it. And it will be used to generate source code. Um, uh, it will also generate native configuration, IoT proxies for classes. And uh, yeah, so uh, this is the, the output will be an optimized Spring Factories, optimized for your specific application, um, an optimized application context that will use functional construct that will be more efficient with GraalVM. And again, that will be specific for your application. So. Pretty, pretty optimized. Bytecode for uh, IoT proxies. So that's basically, yeah, instead of generating bytecode at runtime for your proxies, we will generate that at build time upfront. Uh, and we will just ship the bytecode with it. And obviously, the native configuration that, uh, that make it work on native. So a concrete example, a Spring Boot application will typically, typically use reflection with Spring Factories file and add configuration to analyze the various annotations, etc. There will be um, a class resources uh, read by ASM, uh, and there will be CGD runtime proxy generation. So uh, this is with regular mode, Spring Boot regular runtime. And with Spring Boot running in AOT mode, so it, it can happen both on GVM and native. Okay, it's not native specific. Uh, it will generate at build time a specific uh, implementation for the Spring Factories, a programmatic one, as you can see, or a programmatic um, creation of your application context that will involve um, much, much less reflection uh, that is optimized for your application conditions. Most conditions are, have been evaluated uh, upfront, et cetera. So that's, that's what we are using. And you can imagine that's a pretty big work to be able to support that. So a Spring IoT strategy is really to move most configuration reflection from runtime to build time. It's not about removing reflection because we need reflection to analyze your annotations, et cetera. Uh, reflection still is needed, but we move most of it uh, from uh, runtime to build time. 
and uh, yeah, uh, that allows to to go to go faster and be more efficient and native. The goal is also to reduce the amount of spring infrastructure required at runtime. Um, Maven and Gradle plugins are doing source generation to keep good debuggability. And we found that annotation processors were by design too limited for our needs because we, we do more than just annotation processing. We don't want to work on sources, etc. And at runtime, uh, the AOT mode is, um, that, that's a different mode because that's a different behavior. Um, it's mandatory for native because really native is all about ahead of time uh, evaluation of a lot of things. So it's by design mandatory for native. An option around the GVM, so you have a flag uh, that can be used to trigger the AOT mode or just run the, the regular ones. That's also allowed to compare both modes uh, pretty easily. So uh, the figures, I guess that's the most inter interesting thing. So uh, like I said, I, we have been working uh, five months on that. Uh, Stefan Nicole from the Spring Framework and Spring Boot team has led the, the design and implementation of this new AOT engine. But the whole Spring team was involved, so that's really a team effort, and that that was a pretty huge effort. So um, what we see is that we have between yeah twenty and thirty percent uh, lower memory footprint between Spring Native dot ten and Spring Native dot eleven. So that's that's pretty huge for exactly the same kind of application. Uh, you can see that uh, yeah here uh, this is the memory consumption after startup. So the native RSS memory, everything included. So you can see that, yeah, we can run a Spring Boot application with less than 20 megabytes for a very basic one, less than 50 megabytes for uh, a web one, and less than uh, 90 megabytes for the famous bed clinic sample. Here, this is a Spring Data GDBC variant. So I think that's pretty, pretty good figures. Native startup uh, was fast, but it's even faster. So now we, we can start bed clinic uh, within 70 uh, milliseconds, which is pretty pretty good. Uh, obviously, we will continue to refine this these numbers, but I think we are. You can see the, the nice improvement that we that we got. But IoT is also usable on the GVM, and that's that's I think pretty exciting. We do that for two two reasons mainly. The first one is for debuggability, because yeah, in native world, you don't have all the nice debuggers. I mean, you can debug your Java application compiled to native with GDB, but that's not the same experience that you have with our regular Java debug uh, thing in the IDE. So the goal here is to provide the code path that will be pretty similar to what happened on native, but on the GVM with all the tooling. So that's, I think that's pretty useful. Um, also, a faster feedback loop. So that's uh, because native compilation take times. Com compiling a Spring application in AOT mode take a few seconds. Uh, and the last point is obviously for uh, efficiency. Because um, even if that was not the main goal of our effort until now, um, we had really we, we we really created this AOT mode for native first, but it also provides some um, improvements on the GVM as well. So for example, here, you can see that we, we have an average of 10% lower memory footprint on the GVM, just running the application with the AOT mode enabled. So, I mean, native is a pretty big gap. Uh, here, we are just running the regular Spring application uh, in AOT mode within the, the GVM. So that's, that's a pretty interesting gain. And, I guess uh, with our upcoming focus on that, we we should be able to gain more on the GVM as well. Startup time it's basically between six percent and and seventeen percent. So it it depends on the application. But here uh, again, AOT allow to to start faster, and I think we will be able to do more aggressive optimizations later. Another feature of, of uh, Spring Native.11 is uh, GraalVM 21.3 baseline. So that's that's a pretty important release from the GraalVM team. It provides major improvements to the reflection supports. For example, it provides conditional support for the JSON reflection configuration. Uh, Java 17 support is provided. So basically, the GraalVM team want to support two versions 
at the same time, two LTS version at the same time. So with the introduction of Java 17 support, Java 8 support is removed because it was too old and too, too painful to maintain for the to maintain for the native support. So both Java 11 and 17 are supported. And you can obviously use Java um, the Java uh, 11 flavor of GraalVM to compile your Java 8 application and that will that will likely um, works like like it work on the GVM same same thing here. So Spring Native dot eleven has a GraalVM twenty one dot base line uh, and yeah that's it. Uh, another big change is that um, we uh, uh, within VMware we wanted to provide end to end native support uh, at framework level but also for the lower stack. And that's why we, we have this support agreement in place with uh, Bellsoft. Uh, so Bellsoft already uh, published the Liberica GDK, which is a, a flavor of, of the GDK. And now they, they are publishing as well Liberica Native Image Kit, so Liberica NIC. Uh, uh, and that's basically a GraalVM Community Edition distribution. So it's all based on the open source GraalVM flavor. But instead of using the, the Labs GDK variant that the GraalVM team is using for GraalVM CE, it's using basically the same or very close version of Liberica GDK uh, as a baseline GDK. So that's uh, we think that's a better fit for production workload. And we we support that. Uh, we, we use that out of the box now with the build packs. So when you build your native application with build packs, underneath it using uh, a Bellsoft Libericanic. But yeah, that's just an open source distribution uh, of, uh, of GraalVM community edition. Now, uh, we have spent five months working on this uh, Spring Native uh, .11 release. Obviously, we will release .11.1, .2, et cetera, with, with bug fixes. But there is other, um, other stuff that are moving forward. So. Uh, I usually get the question when Spring Native will be GA. Um, I think my answer is never, and that's a good news because uh, native support will not be um, GA via Spring Native 1.0, for example. The future of Spring Native is first class native support in Spring Boot 3, uh, which is a much more ambitious plan, in my opinion, and that will allow tighter integration and better support of native in, in the spring in the spring platform so that will allow to reach a new level of compatibility and footprint via deeper changes in spring because remember all what we did in spring native we did that without major changes on spring framework spring boot and other projects so that that was a huge constraint and now with the development of spring framework 6 and spring boot 3 uh, starting we can do this kind of modification and that's that's open uh, a whole new world of possibilities. So concretely, um, so architecture likely to change as we implement it, but basically the IoT engine is really a Spring Framework 6 feature. Uh, the Spring portfolio project like Spring Data, Spring Security, we provide and test their IoT transformation and their native support uh, at each project level, so basically Spring Data, Spring Security, we will test the native and IoT data and security support. And then the integration will be at Spring Boot 3 level with IoT and native being integrated in Spring Boot plugins, native documentation, etc. And I don't forget the, nat the, the GraalVM side. So uh, the Spring team is really committed to provide a great native support for Spring, but also to put the support at the right place, like we don't want to maintain uh, native ins for MySQL GDBC driver, for example. That should be something that is shared across all the framework using native, we think. And that's why we collaborate with the GraalVM team uh, on this new native configuration repository uh, effort, not yet public, but uh, will be shortly. And uh, the goal is really to have a place uh, where uh, Libraries that don't want to ship yet native support directly can provide native configuration that allow to, to support that. And that's, yeah, we are, we are going to work on that. So the roadmap toward GA. So if you want to use native right now, just use spring native.11. Uh, but be aware that uh, 
native support will be provided uh, in Spring Boot 3 milestones, so uh, likely milestone 2, late March 2022. So basically what you get today with Spring Native.11 will be available in March, late March, within Spring Boot 2, 3 milestone 2. And the GA is planned late 2022. So that's uh, yeah, that's that's our plan. So that's basically the work uh, toward next year. And we will obviously provide migration path from Spring Native. So if you are using Spring Native today, you won't be totally lost. Uh, something will change, but something will remain, and uh, we will provide mi migration path. Our goal is to provide seamless integration in Spring Boot increase native support, uh, runtime efficiency via AOT transformation for both native and GVM. And um, if you have heard um, uh, Jürgen earlier talking about that, Java 17 will be the baseline. So Spring Boot 3 and Spring from Oxys will be Java 17 uh, plus. Uh, that will be the, the baseline. I have already mentioned the native repository, so no need to give too much detail about that yet. Um, so we are really building a framework for the ne next decade, and that's what we do with the Spring Framework 6 and Spring Boot 3 efforts. Uh, Spring Boot 3 IoT transformation and native support uh, will likely benefit to millions of Spring Boot applications. So I think this is uh, the biggest difficulty for us is that we we need to support something that is used by millions of Spring Boot developers, but uh, as we mature our native support and we are approaching that goal, I think the potential is huge because it just, yeah, recompile your your existing application, compile it to native. So currently it requires some some fine tuning and not everything is supported, but we are working on it. And, and it just offering you some new capabilities, both with this IoT mode on GVM and on native, and that require no no major changes on your side. So I think that's, that's uh, yeah, pretty, pretty exciting. So I think I'm done with the presentation. You can find the, the URL of the repository on GitHub, uh, github.com slash spring projects experimental slash spring native. You will find a link uh, to the documentation. You can go to start.spring.io, select the native dependency to try it. And, um, yeah, I think I'm ready to answer to the questions, if there are some. OK, thanks for your knowledge, your time. Uh, really cool presentation. We have a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is from Carlo Canjemi. In your experience on real use cases, how much do you need to temper your uh, with your application, for example, with the native hints to make it work natively? Yeah, so it really depends, obviously, on the dependencies that you are using. So um, uh, we, I think we have, uh, we have something like uh, 30 or 40 samples that uh, we are building continuously on our CI to check that we, we support a reasonable number of use cases and we we increase that support. So if you are using just uh, supported libraries, should be should be pretty fine. But real life applications are using <laughs> a wide range of dependencies. So uh, you will have to provide your own ins for unsupported libraries and really, yeah. Uh, I, I can't provide uh, an answer that feel for all use cases, but uh, it, it really it really depends. Uh, so uh, you need to evaluate that. I, I would advise to to start by a simple application, like start by start.spring.io, add a few dependencies and see how it goes and, and check what is supported in the Spring Native documentation. There is a list of what is explicitly supported. If it's not in the list, that's not supported yet. And that's why, in parallel, we are working on this native repository effort with GraalVM team, because uh, you will quickly find issues with non-Spring libraries that are not supporting uh, native yet or not testing it yet. And we think that's critical that this part of the native support is shared across the various use cases, not just Spring, but all others. And that, that's why we, we push for this native configuration repository. So basically, if a library directly support native, like Tomcat or Native does, just use the native, uh, the, 
the, the library and it does not require uh, docu uh, config native configuration. If a library is not supporting yet native and don't want to support it because maybe that's too early, they don't know how to test it, the community or Spring or other frameworks can contribute, uh, will be able to contribute in this repository the, the native configuration, but also the native test. So native uh, unit tests will be mandatory to have configuration in that repository because if that's not tested, that, that does not make any sense because we want to be able to run again the test when a new version of the library is published because we don't want to have to craft a new a new configuration for native for each batch release, for example, for a given library. So yeah, a lot of a lot of work still on that that side, but we 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 think that that spring we have a reasonable state right now. I don't claim that everything works out of the box, but with a few ins today on the supported libraries, it, it works pretty well. Uh, and we want to obviously increase the scope of what, what is supported because there is so many so many ways of using Spring applications. So yeah, basically we we mature the support as we integrate the bits in, in, in Boot3 to, to support more, more use cases. Also, we 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 introduced a new AOT engine. So obviously there, there has been a few few regression because we, we basically changed the engine of the of the plane while it was flying. So it's uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. So another question is uh, from for log4j from Marco. Mm -hmm. Log4j issue was is a big mess. Mm -hmm. Have you got any advice to be solid at this uh, bug? Um, I'm not, I'm not a specialist of the of the topic, so I think did you share the blog post that feel? Um, yeah, because uh, before the talk, this talk, we we have a little bit uh, uh, chat about this particular issue and. Uh, there is a blog post from uh, Phil Webb, who yeah. is the leader of the Spring Boot team, who is giving advices to the community um, in a much more knowledgeable way than me uh, about that. So feel free to share the, the link of the blog post if you if you can. And yeah, I, I think that's a good summary of um, of what is possible. Um, we are going to release. So there is no need to wait for a Spring Boot update for that. It's just dependency management that can be over, over, overridden, and that's what is explained here. Uh, and yeah, there, there has been two new versions of Log4G2, I think, uh, that, uh, .15, .16. In, that, in .16, they have totally disabled the lookup uh, in order to, to, yeah, to do a strong change to really avoid uh, this kind of issue to appear uh, in the future. And next version of Spring Boot will just leverage that, but for now, just follow what is explained in this blog post by Phil uh, to to use um, either to configure uh, uh, log4j to disable this this uh, lookup, or even better if you can just use the latest um, the latest uh, log4j version release that avoid by default this this issue. But yeah, that's that's a pretty huge one. Okay, thanks. And another question is, uh, are native ints specific to Spring or support for uh, other code as well? So um, cu currently, the native ints, like the annotation that we provide at native ints, at type int, etc., are Spring specific. Uh, uh, I, th I think it would be great at some point to have some kind of standardization of that, but that requires quite a lot of time and work because everybody needs to agree on a kind of opinionated API. There is the annotated API, but there is also the programmatic API. So for example, we have this native configuration registry API that allows to register reflection, proxies, etc. Uh, so I hope that in the future, the Guardian team could leverage what we did to take inspiration of that. And we are fully supportive of that, but for now, we really focus on provide this native configuration repository based on the JSON format. So something simple, already defined. Uh, and and later, yeah, I, I would hope some kind of standardization, but that let's provide support based on the JSON format right now uh, with full testing, et cetera, and, and then 
we will be able to discuss in a second time what kind of API we could share across um, various uh, implementation. Okay. Um, another question is for um, the slides. If you have a tool to share the slides. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I, uh, it's not shared yet, so I, I could provide, I guess, a slide or a PDF export. Uh, I will share that with you uh, after, the, after the presentation. Okay, perfect. And here, another question from Gamal. Mm -hmm. Thanks, uh, Sebastian. I tried the Spring Native in a real-life uh, prod uh, component, and I failed to run the app because it depends on a ton of features that were available in Spring Boot 2, mm -hmm. um, but uh, not available. So, not, yeah, I guess not supported on, uh, on Spring Native yet. So, uh, indeed, we support. So, there is support for WebFlux, for um, uh, WebMVC, for GPA, etc. but some bits are not supported yet. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it all depends on what you need to, on the scope of what you are using. Uh, our goal is to increase uh, the scope of the support uh, in Spring Boot 3 and not just Spring Boot 3.0, but also other ones. Uh, our goal is really to, we want to get it right in terms of foundation uh, and then, and footprint and various things, and then increase uh, the scope of the support. Uh, so, Honestly, for now, we, we add more focus on working on this IoT engine, get the architecture right uh, with uh, yeah, 30, uh, 30 starters supported. And, and then we will uh, increase the, the scope of what is supported. So it's, it's why it's still beta. Uh, it's, I think it's usable for some use cases. Some people are already using it in production. Uh, does not work for all the application and typically on um, yeah, existing ones that are using a lot of, I mean, native is not a free lunch. It requires a lot of tricks uh, to work and we, we want to support it right. So um, we, yeah, it takes time to, to, to mature. Okay, because here we have also the rest of the, the question mm -hmm. and maybe go on with this, but I think your answer is good to answer for all so, these. Yeah, and if you if you find some issues, uh, I mean, report that. So uh, typically go to Spring Project Experimental slash Spring Native, create an issue, provide a repro. That's super important to provide a reproducible use case. So I know sometimes you are using your production application. You can share it because that's from your company. So yeah, we will take the time to fix that. Uh, uh, what you report, but please take the time to create a minimal repro uh, in order to allow us to uh, basically work, work on it. Uh, that's that's super important to have this kind of repro and uh, pro pro provide it. I mean, a few months ago, we were not supporting, for example, um, so GraalVM support JDK, GDK dynamic proxies on top of interfaces, but uh, uh, proxies on top of classes typically created at runtime by CGD by Spring uh, were not supported because by design you can't create bytecode, generate bytecode at runtime with GraalVM native. And and that was this class of uh, as soon as your application was using that, that was not supported. That's why we have worked on this uh, AOT generation of proxies and now that's supported. So that's supported, but maybe not inferred automatically for every kind of application. So that's where maybe you need to specify some at IoT proxy ins or things like that. But again, sh share the use case uh, that is failing and uh, we will provide either advices to provide some native ins or just uh, improve our inference engine to okay. support that correctly. Okay. And there aren't any other questions Mm -hmm. So mm, we can uh, say hello to everybody that uh, stayed with us uh, uh, today. And thanks for uh, your talk, Sebastian, and your knowledge, and also for your work uh, into the Spring team, because uh, our uh, business uh, is on top of Spring, and uh, you, with your code, uh, help us to go straight to the production. My pleasure. Thanks for having okay. me.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.